So it's, uh, it's a bit of a while till sunset, so I thought I'd take uh, advantage of the opportunity to just explain a little bit uh, about how I'm going to go about setting up the Move Shoot Move tracker. So first step really uh, is going to be to get our base level and set up the right heads on here. So I'm going to remove my usual Manfrotto tripod head and uh, I've got loaded up on here already uh, this uh, leveling base. So this is the uh, newer LB60 leveling base and by just undoing this here um, I can ensure that the tripod is leveled using a little bubble uh, here. So it's, it basically sits in its own little cup and um, within reasonable limits of about 15 degrees in any direction I can uh, I can level this, uh, ready to sit um, my Move Shoot Move wedge on, which is in here. The Move Shoot Move uh, is the uh, wedge is the next stage. And um, this, uh, which hopefully you can see, um, is really nicely put together. And uh, this allows us to set uh, the particular uh, angle uh, for the um, for the actual rotator uh, to go in, and that's set at an angle that will allow us to align it with um, with the North Star with Polaris. Uh, and it also has a pan facility on it, which is controlled by these two uh, knobs here, and allow us to give a very precise uh, alignment uh, on the tracker. So we'll pop that on next. And I need to get that aligned approximately to north. And, um, and I happen to know that north is pretty much in that direction. And so uh, we're going to align, align it that way. And, um, you know, we can adjust that a little bit later uh, if we need to. Uh, I moved the tripod there, so it's slightly off level again now. So I'll just correct that. That saves an awful lot of fussing around with the tripod legs. So that next stage um, is to get the actual tracker itself. And so uh, this uh, we're going to mount. I've already mounted the base plate on it. And there's a couple of different ways that you can mount this. Uh, the important way that the thing is that whichever way you mount it this axis here uh, so going through there that needs to basically end up being pointing uh, at polaris uh, or at uh, the north north pole so uh, this sits on here and we lock it into place So I put all my move, shoot, move uh, bits and pieces in this little goodie box. This is actually from a, um, a newer light, from a newer light fitting. And uh, uh, I just find it really handy just to keep everything together. And so one of the things you'll find in here is this little device, which the, uh, uh, the laser um, alignment device will sit in so we're going to pop this on now it doesn't matter exactly where on here this goes uh, the important thing is that it's um, oriented and fitted so that when the laser sits in it uh, one that the laser um, there's access for the for the laser and two that the laser device itself will be pointing along the same axis as the rotator here. So that's the laser and then that's going to go in there. So that's sitting nice and neatly now. And this is now ready for us to align. And um, 
I can't show you at the moment, obviously, because I've got a night sky at the minute, but uh, if we did, then uh, I would be looking for uh, the plough, uh, and, um, and then I would be orienting uh, the, oh, I'd, be, I'd, be find, I'd be using that as my orientation for finding Polaris. So if you take the end of the, not the handle part of it, but the ladle part, the cup of the, of the plough, uh, follow it up uh, about four times the difference between the two stars on the right hand end of the, of the plough, you'll get pretty much to uh, a bright uh, a star in the sky and that will be Polaris. Uh, now, um, something else that I have uh, invested in uh, recently uh, is a um, Allen Wallace, uh, what they call a Z mount, in fact, and uh, this is to make it easier uh, to put what is now becoming quite a weighty camera kit uh, onto, onto this. Okay. It doesn't really matter whether you put this on before or after you do your polar alignment. Um, I tend to prefer to put it on um, after, uh, sorry, before I do the polar alignment because otherwise there's a significant risk uh, that you will simply put it out of alignment again through all the fiddling that, uh, that then happens. Uh, I do like this um, Z mount. Uh, first, it's got this release here that enables us uh, to ensure that we get a good alignment with the tracker itself. And then it, it locks in place really well, actually. And what it will enable us to do uh, is ensure that when we put the camera on here, uh, that it's sat in a position that isn't going to put too much strain on the move, shoot, move, um, axis basically so it's less likely to just sort of fall over so it's going to help us keep a good orientation and uh, a good balance as well because um, it's becoming quite a weighty system uh, the Nikon uh, D750 uh, setup that I'm putting together and then sat on top of that I've got a small little bull mount um, this is a Manfrotto 492 ball mount and this is rated to take up to about five kilograms of weight. So let's pretend that I've done my polar alignment, uh, I've shot my laser up into the sky, it's aligned with Polaris. Um, uh, I can now mount my camera on there. So I have an L plate fitted to, an L bracket fitted to my camera, that means I can orientate it either in portrait mode or in landscape mode. At the moment I've got it set up so that the uh, camera is actually pointing um, north. In fact I'm not going to want it pointing north, chances are I'm going to want it pointing um, something like that direction which is sort of rough broadly speaking southwest and um, because I know that this is level because it's got a ball level in it and it's quite easy to level it. I know that I can just simply loosen my ball head there which has got like a little panning head on it and I'm ready to, ready to shoot there. I can, it allows me, it gives me enough room to be able to angle the camera pretty much where, pretty much where I want. Um, for the shot that I want to do later, if we get as far as that, if the sky clears, um, then what I'll do, I'll actually probably get the camera much lower to the ground so we can be uh, looking up at the Milky Way. The Milky Way is very vertical in the sky as well uh, at the moment. Uh, and so that means actually I'll probably be shooting in portrait mode. Um, but there we go, that's, that's the physical setup of the move, shoot, move. Uh, device. I'll just bring um, the camera in a bit closer now and uh, give you a closer view uh, of how exactly I've put this together. And if you want to you can always pause that if you want to practice with your own setup 
and you fancy doing something similar to this, and then this will give you a pretty good idea of how it's all put together. Now, if you've got any questions about that, uh, do pop them in the comments and I'd love to hear from you. Hello there, future Nigel here, back in the office. Well, uh, since making that video, uh, I have decided to make one or two changes to my move, shoot, move tripod setup. And um, the reason for that really was that I found that in practice, the number of things I put together on the tripod um, was just um, not so much too complicated, but it was taking up too much space and too much weight. So we were adding something like about a foot to the height of the tripod. So in the high winds, particularly that we had that night, uh, it meant that uh, any tiny vibration in a tripod was really exacerbating uh, the amount of blur in the images that I was getting and rendering them unacceptable. So uh, I'm going to do a couple of things. Firstly, I decided um, that I'm going to ditch this item for the time being, when I'm, particularly when I'm using a wide angle lens, because I think it's overkill. This is the move, shoot, move wedge. And for what I'm doing, I don't think I quite need this level of accuracy. And there are nice things about it. You can dial in and advance the azimuth um, angle that you want there. Um, so that's all great, uh, but it's adding quite a bit of weight and quite a bit of height to the setup. Um, the other issue is that um, the bull head uh, that I've been using, uh, which was either uh, this one or a larger Manfrotto one. This is the Manfrotto uh, 492. I also have a much larger one that I've been using. Uh, are also adding significantly to the height and weight of the setup. Now, something I did try the other evening was this device. So this is the um, Allen Wallace uh, Z mount. So cool because it makes a kind of Z shape. And this has a couple of features which I find really helpful. Uh, the first is this little dial here. And if you loosen this, it allows you to rotate um, in this sort of level plane the entire uh, mount. And so that can be great for changing the angle of view. And then the other key feature that it has uh, that's useful for astronomy um, is that I can change quite carefully um, some level of precision uh, the azimuth angle for the mounting of the move shoot move tracker so what I'm going to do, um, firstly, I'm going to use this, one of these, in place of the wedge. Uh, and then I'm going to use another one of these in place of the bull head. Uh, because I can get all of the movement that I need, firstly, in that plane. And secondly, in that plane, by using uh, one of these on top of the tracker. And I can get the angle that I need the tracker to be set at by using one of these underneath. So I'm going to give that uh, a go. So um, it will mean that I'm carrying a lot less weight. Uh, these are very compact. They're so easy to fit in your pack and um, they'll take up less space, they'll take up less weight um, and they lock really well. So when these have been tightened up, nothing is moving around. And um, because it also has a sliding um, quarter 20 nut here, or screw, uh, you have a reasonable amount of flexibility in exactly where you, uh, you kind of mount things. And that helps you keep the center of gravity um, of all the equipment that you've piled on top of your tripod. It helps you keep the center of gravity over the center line of the tripod and so that makes it all a lot more stable. Uh, so I'd be interested to know if any of you have tried anything similar and uh, or whether you've got other 
uh, ways of stabilizing your move shoot move setup uh, or of making it simpler uh, than I have or than I propose. So let me know any suggestions you've got in the comments. Look forward to hearing from you in the meantime. Thanks very much for watching and um, bye for now.